So slavery was God's mercy. 99% of people who label themselves Black and Christian will never find the galls, okay, to say that to you. Because again, we care more about appeasing man and we care more about man's opinion of us than we care about the truth and standing in the truth of God's full authority. All right. So this is why the pastors and the preachers and all these things, they seem so ineffective when it comes to the things of God. And it feels like they're just blah, 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 blah. Because even though they're speaking truth, they're not breaking you free from the real bondage that you're in. And the real bondage that you're in is one of unforgiveness and one that you truly feel like the biggest victim on the face of this earth. And you've gone through the worst atrocity ever and God has not made it right. And you actually have God on trial. And this is why so many of you guys are walking away from the faith or considering walking away from faith or the enemy can manipulate you guys to think that God is useless in your life because you actually have God on trial because that's how innocent you think you are. And that's how evil and wicked that you think God is, that he will cause harm to come to your ancestors that affects you to, to this day. And they, whatever this experience was, was not justified. And I am here to let you know without a shadow of a doubt that slavery was God's mercy. And don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you. So my name is Michelle. I'm a faith-based mindset coach. Welcome, right? Um, I'm also the author of The Black Child's Guide to Surviving America. I am also the creator of the Beauty for Ashes program, where you learn how to surrender your survival strength and embrace divine empowerment. And this week, God has really had me in this space where I am talking to you guys about the spiritual war, okay? And winning that spiritual war. I haven't talked about Black things in a while. After I wrote The Black Child's Guide to Surviving America, I felt like that was my final thing where I said I've said what I need to say. And then I moved on to helping people break free from these limitations. And this week, the Lord's like, nope, talk to them about this. So hi, I am here on your screen. So I know you probably are pissed off at me right now and you're feeling some kind of way. I get it. I understand where you're coming from and I know why you're triggered, but I'm not here to play games with you. So let's walk through it. So now in order for you to understand why I say that slavery was God's mercy, you have to understand my background, okay? I'm a Haitian American, right? Um, born in Haiti, families from Haiti, but have been living in America since I was a child. And we all see what's going on in Haiti right now, right? We see the condition and everything that's going on. I made a video recently basically letting everybody know that this is a spiritual war. And we know, especially as Haitians, we know that this is a spiritual war, a spiritual battle. And I wanted to challenge them to consider the spirituality that we're, that the people, right, or the community is holding on tight to and to release it, completely denounce it, let it go, right? And to really see that our ancestors had it wrong here. And that's a big challenge for people because there's this idea that if you let go of the spirituality of your ancestors or you denounce or renounce it, then all of a sudden that you are believing in the white man's God. Now, I don't play that kind of ignorance. So if that's where you want to go with this conversation, sit over here to the left, right? Um, I really want to have an adult conversation with people that choose to be adults, but we're talking spirituality. So if you have a hard time staying in a spiritual realm and talking about spiritual things. And this means that you're not quit for this conversation, that you're going to need to sit down the same way that if you enter into something and somebody's talking about economics, you need to know when you are a student and not a teacher, you follow? So if you don't have this level of spiritual understanding, then that means all you are is somebody that's throwing a tantrum because you're upset by what you're hearing, okay? But nonetheless, you still need to sit down or just walk away, block me, do all of that. But nonetheless, it's a spiritual conversation that's being had. So let's talk spiritual. Now, the unique thing about the Haitian community is that you can trace back where you're from in Africa based off of the type of, you know, spirituality that's practiced. Meaning I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm talking about whether it's voodoo, whatever you do, you can trace it back. Now, in Haitian culture, there's three main um, spiritualities that's practiced that come from, stem from Africa. It is Dahomey, it is Congo, and it is um, Yoruba. And the way you know, and it still goes on in Africa today, the way you know each spiritual tribe is by the drums. So where my family comes from and my ancestors come from in Haiti, they follow what's called the drums of the homie. Okay. So every single Haitian, now my parents are not involved in this. This is more grandparents, great, great grandparents. So the misconception that Haitians are involved in voodoo, it's a lie, right? Um, most Haitians or many new generation Haitians were not involved in that, but we're aware of that previous ancestors were involved in that. You follow? So many Christians are maybe following a true faith with God, but they have ancestors that practice the stuff. The thing about it is that we're dealing with the generational consequence, consequence of what they dealt with. And we're having a hard time grappling with that, the fact that this could be the case, especially when you feel like that's what bought them their freedom. You follow? So this is where that contention is right here. So now what I want you to do is research Dahomey because I've been able to trace myself back all the way back to the Dahomey kingdom, okay? And when you look into the Dahomey kingdom, I want you to look into the pride. Don't get into this romanticization because we have to be very careful, especially with what the identity crisis that American Black people are going to. Now, 
Black people across the world are having their own issues. But because Black Americans have been so far removed from, which was, again, God's grace and mercy, but they want to undo God's grace and mercy and they want to run back to what their what they believe their ancestors did, not realizing that what God gave them, again, was mercy. All right, let me keep going. So when you look into the Dahomey kingdom, get out of the romanticization of, oh my gosh, the woman king and stuff like that. No, actually research the actual practices of these people, okay? This is one of the most brutal tribes in Africa, the most brutal. You have to understand the majority of the, all of the world operate in paganism. And one of the things that every single pagan community did is they believed in human sacrifices. And our kingdom, the Dahomey kingdom, was one of the most vicious when it comes to human sacrificing. They were great administrators. Um, they worked, they, they built a very powerful kingdom, but all of it was built on the backs of slavery. And understand it was enslaving their own people. You follow? So they would take neighboring tribes and you would become their slave. So now you have to understand the homie, no different from the rest of the world, are tribal thinking, right? Nations. So they don't look at it as these are my people, black people, the way, you know, Europeans have come to try to make us think that all black people, we belong together as one group, white people believe, belong together as one group. Even, you know, when you look at what's happened in Europe, Greeks, uh, you know, Italians, et cetera, like there's always been outside worlds, like y'all all look the same, but that's not how you treat each other because you have different cultures, languages, et cetera. Well, that's the case with the Dahomey. So the Dahomey would enslave other black people to the point where even when a king died in Dahomey, they would just kill 4,000 slaves just because as a celebration. So these people were wicked. Wicked in the ways that they maneuver. Wick wicked in the ways that they did things. Is this a condemnation of Black people as a whole? No, because you can look at Caucasians. You can look at, you know, Asians. You can look at every single people. We're talking about power and we're talking about a spiritual war, right? We're all... <laughs> Anyways, I'll get into that in another video. I'm not going to get into that now, but everybody's basically a pawn in the devil's game, okay? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, okay? So these countries are going to war. It's like a freaking um, Greek um, mythology right now, right? Where the gods are intentionally put, putting us all against each other for their own amusement. But let's talk about it. So the level of pride that Haitians operate with as a community, you have to understand, even though they came from different kingdoms in Africa, where the drums would have been um, for the blood oath or the blood covenant that happened. It was more than likely the homie, okay, that led this revolt. Um, yes, there's character players, but I'm talking about the spirituality. What drums did they play, okay? Because those, and I haven't confirmed that. I do want to say that because, again, the three main drums are um, the homie, Congo, and Yoruba, but the area in Haiti where they did um, this thing it's where it's closer to where that Dahomey temple is basically. My whole point is, is that the, the, this is the spirituality that was practiced. So let's pretend slavery never happened. You know what my ancestors would have been doing when um, the Haitian revolt happened? One of the things that we talk about is kupetet bulekai. And what that basically means is cut off their heads and burn everything, right? So you know what we would have been doing in Africa? The same kupetet bulekai. The same kupetet bulekai. But instead of that white person being our enemy, it would have been back to your great-great-grandmother or your great-great-grandfather. So if you weren't a slave to the white man, you could have easily been a slave in the Dahomey kingdom. So God's mercy, slavery, is either you could have gone through what your ancestors would have gone through in Africa or you could now go through a series of events that gets you to the point that challenges challenges you to wipe away this mindset and this ancestry that comes from your ancestors and to learn a new way of life a new culture a new understanding right and to submit to the creator of heaven and earth so that you can walk with a different character when it comes to engaging with other humans and this is where I get offensive, and I don't mean to be, but from a spiritual standpoint, all worshiping, that is not the worshiping of the creator of heaven and earth. The creator of heaven and earth. It's paganism. And the spirit of truth is not operating in you. Okay. So then now, we're trying to be told to go back and hold on to a spirituality that 
will cause my ancestors to do that to people. We're talking human sacrifices. And this is not just, again, a Black thing. This is, when you look at even Europe, their paganism, a lot of human sacrificing. Guys, the paganism, if you go back to the cultures of everybody, the paganism that we guys practice was evil. So then now, if the things that we love to do as a Dahomey people was to enslave, is that how we build our kingdom? We love enslaving people. We felt almighty and powerful through this method. And now we got to feel how it feels to be what we did to other people. So even though I may feel some way about how my ancestors in Haiti were treated 200 years ago, talk to another person in Africa that was non-Dahomey 400 years ago, for example, and see how they feel about the fact that the descendants of the Dahomey people are enslaved. Those people will be cheering and saying, there is a God. Those people will be cheering and saying, finally, they felt what they were doing to others. God don't miss. So I had to denounce and renounce all demonic covenants and curses that would cause me and my lineage and my ancestors to be paying a spiritual debt for that. And many of you guys, black, white, Spanish, it doesn't matter, guys. You know, these races are dumb. These colors are dumb, right? So whatever crayon box <laughs> color you want to identify as, we all come from ancestors that have practiced some paganism that carries spiritual debt. And you might want to judge mine and look at mine the same, but yours is real bad. Listen, I'm not worried about what you think about what my spiritual debt looks like. What you need to be concerned about is getting your spiritual freedom. I'm just simply sharing my story to encourage you to make yourself right with God. And so in closing, for those of you guys that may have been familiar with my previous content, right, on Black content, um, I came against this whole idea when Black people were trying to encourage more so Black Americans, and other Black cultures taking a part of it, but it was being led by Black Americans, that we need to get away from the quote-unquote white man's God and all this nonsense, and we want to run back to something of the ancestors when they don't even know. God completely wiped them away from even having to carry that knowledge, right, of their ancestors. So they weren't even able to carry the spirituality, so it forced them to have to practice the spirituality that was in front of them. And I don't care what nobody says, they gained their freedom through that spirituality, through belief in Christ, Jesus, Yeshua. I'm going to make it very clear. And there's been no other Black people, Black nation, that God has blessed more than he has blessed them. And my indifference with Black Americans was always trying to get me to feel ungrateful or to feel like I shouldn't be appreciative for the opportunity that God has given me. And I'll never let you put that level of hate in my heart because I'm eternally grateful. So if you want to run back and go serve those spirits, the spirits of your ancestors, if they were so mighty and they were so powerful, why'd you end up in slavery in the first place? Why'd you end up there? And the European Americans, they tried to use God's name because, remember, this was a region of the earth where they want to rebuild the Roman Empire. And they tried to use religion through Jesus to do that. But see, this the thing, the beautiful thing about God's name is that you can't play with him. Because here you are, I saw this video of this guy. He thought this girl invited him to church. So he's thinking like, oh, I'm going to get a bay. I'm going to follow her to church. And what ended up happening is that he's never seen this woman again after she's invited him. And now he's going through a whole life transformation, all because he thought he was going to chase a bay into church. And now here he is getting his life transformed. See, European Americans thought that they were going to rule and rebuild the Roman Empire <laughs> with the name of Jesus. And look what you did. What the enemy intended for evil, God will use for good. You end up being the very vehicle, even with your evil intent, God used to bring the knowledge of who he is to this earth. And the beautiful thing about what happened is that once Black Americans, I always tell people, I love the ancestor of Black Americans. These new age ones, they're disrespecting their ancestors. They have so much disrespect. So much disrespect. But they challenge, when they start reading that word for what it is, it challenged the faith of those quote-unquote Christian slave masters. 
And it caused not only them to get an awareness of who they are and their liberation, their freedom as a people, but it caused them to challenge you and say, hey, you're not representing this God. And that confrontation of sharing that same spirituality is what ended slavery across the world. There's still areas where slavery is still going on. But those events being set in motion, it led to the end of something. And it, it led to the end of an era. As disgusting as it is, as brutal as it uh, is, but we all come from some very power-hungry, wicked, evil ancestors. Some of us have good, I'm not saying that. But the majority of people operating selfishly. And after, they're not, they're not trying to do God's will. They're not trying to please God. The freedom Black Americans walk in today was given to them by the blood of Christ. The freedom Haitians walk in was given to them by the blood of a pig. <laughs> it don't get more realer than that. It don't get more realer than that. And the only reason so many half of are like, well, why are we still suffering? Is because you have leaders amongst you that don't want you to have the full knowledge of truth and the full knowledge of who you are, meaning and what God sees about you. You're struggling with your confidence. You're struggling with your self-worth because there's messaging out there that has been, again, that's why I wrote the Black Child's Guide to Surviving America, to make sure, especially as immigrant people, I learned that there's a messaging in America, a political messaging that tries to attack your self-worth. And try to make you think that you're less than and you're nobody because you're black. But once you get past that, once you get past that and you realize that, okay, that's a lie from the pits of hell and you don't engage in that, you don't entertain in that, and you get into the fullness of who God, what God says about you, and you walk in that authority and you walk in obedience, your life completely changes. I'm grateful. Again, this was all God's mercy. So I'm Michelle Maiden. I'm a generational curse breaker of a spiritual debt that at minimum, I'd say is at least 500 years old. You really think I can pay 500 years worth of debt? I could barely pay the debt in the few decades I've lived on this earth. So you can act like you don't need Jesus. But who's going to pay that spiritual debt for you? I love y'all. Get in the comments. Let's talk about it. Disrespectful people will be blocked. But this is the beginning of an important conversation that leads to your breakthrough. And I am happy and blessed and privileged to get you there in every way that God has anointed me to do so. Have a good day. Bye.